The first sentence of Leo Tolstoy's novel, Anna Karenina, is happy families are all alike, but every unhappy family is unhappy in its own way. Well, when I first saw this quote, I was a bit confused, I admit. I didn't really understand what it meant. But after I thought about it for a little while, I began thinking, maybe this has to do with parenting. Maybe this has to do with how parents play a role in establishing happiness for their own half family and their own children. Welcome to my TED Talk. I'm Teddy Tan, and today I hope to talk about the topic of parenting, specifically what type of parenting is necessary for the best development of your child and the best man maintaination, if that's even a word, for your relationship. So let's begin by starting and stating, I am not a parent. I am just a teenager. I don't know anything about parenting at all. However, I do have the experience of an adolescent as I am nearing the end of my development. And so this understanding of what it's like to be an adolescent currently feeds into this idea that I under understand what an adolescent needs through development and even what type of parenting they may need as they continue to grow up. However, what is funny is that I tried to do this speech a while back through the lens of a parent. but at this time, I was just 12 years old. Now that's me doing my very first talk in seventh grade and I tried to do a, another talk on parenting. And even though it is similar to this, I tried to give this talk by stating exactly how one should parent their child acting as if I was a parent, which is completely wrong and does not really get the message across. But what I did back then was that I referenced uh, developmental psychologists Diana Baumrind and Stanford researchers Eleanor McCoby and John Martin in four different parenting styles. Permissive, authoritarian, negligent or uninvolved, and authoritative parenting. And now it's been five years since then. And now I realize that this type of speech was not exactly the best way to carry over my message. And so through this development, I now have become more of an adolescent, developed more as an adolescent, but I've also went from California all the way to Singapore. So I also have a better understanding of culture and how parenting can affect this type of culture. So today I hope to offer an extension with this newfound knowledge as I've discovered new people and I've developed more. And today I will give this talk through the eyes of an adolescent to a parent, maybe to give insight to parents who don't really understand their child as much, and also to maybe to give insight to adolescents who don't understand why their parents parent them in a specific way. So let's begin with what is required for a good well-being and, and um, relationship with, with a parent and child. And these are three factors, mental health and well-being, development and satisfaction. Now, mental health and well-being feeds into the idea that the child is able to cope and is able to prosper despite being going through the hardships of development. And development in itself is just the child turning from not understanding anything, being innocent as a kid, to going to an adult and actually being able to be responsible and be in the working force. While satisfaction carries over to being a parent. And that uh, involves how, how a parent feels about their child, whether they think that they've grown enough, whether they are reaching specific expectations. And so all these three factors come together to, sh to create a good parent relationship. As long as all of this is put into a specific criteria and checkmarked, we can ensure that there will be a good relationship and there will be development that occurs for the child. But we must also understand what does the child want? What do they desire? because we know what the parents desire, they desire development for the child. But the child wants one thing in particular, and that is to live their adolescent life out to the fullest. Now, what does this mean? Well, this means that they want to make plenty of friends in high school. They want to make tons of relationships with maybe even the opposite sex in high school. And sometimes they want to use this freedom that they only have right now as an adolescent to just do anything they want, to do completely unproductive things and to do completely wild things, right? And according to the National Center for Biotechnology Information, this actually checks out because these high school friends provide support 
through resources and can encourage and both encourage academic achievement, but can also, according to the University of Minnesota, contribute to lifelong social skills and confidence among peers. So if we want to fulfill all this criteria, including mental health, as just first described, and also show children that they can truly achieve this, we need to know what type of parenting styles is necessary to do this. So first, let's look at the more American permissive parenting. Now, what are permissive parents like? Well, they critique their child. Sorry, they don't critique their child. That is the opposite of permissive parenting. They essentially don't critique their child. They give their child free will and free reign to do what they want. And this actually feeds into this idea of American culture. American culture is obsessed with the idea of freedom and freedom of expression. And all this free, although this freedom of expression can yield very positive results, like their brilliant universities, or top tier minds that are constantly thinking without any constraints, it can also yield very nonsensical ideas like anti-mask, like not um, like modern communists or even flat earthers. So with all of these ideas, right, America seems like free will can be good and bad at the same time. And this is the same for permissive parenting. Free will can be good or bad if offered to the child. Well, if you give the child complete control over their life, they can use this individuality and free will to progress and become something great. If you're constantly, you know, never critiquing them and constantly giving them compliments. However, it can also create a very bad outcome of a child who makes mistakes but doesn't learn from them because they're constantly being complimented from their, by their parent to ensure a proper relationship. This ends up giving more power to the child because the parent is just too afraid of, you know, to critique the child in the first place to not hurt their feelings. And this can actually yield not great results. And we can see this through a study done by Yale and U.S. College, a systematic review of parenting in Singapore. And they looked at permissive parenting. And although they did see some good things like good freedom of expression and uh, better social skills, they also saw an increase in delinquent in behavior. Now, why is this? Because these children will act out as teenagers and rebel if limits are not put on them. And some of these mistakes that they make and problems that they have that parents don't bother to correct because they're permissive can affect them throughout their entire life and stay uncorrected, putting them almost in an endless cycle. So when we look at the criteria here, what is filled out? Well, the criteria of Satisfaction for the parent because they're able to keep a good relationship with the child. They don't hurt their feelings in any way by critiquing them. And um, for the child, because they're mentally happy, right? They don't have any constraints on them and they're not insulted in any way by their parent. So of course they're gonna have a good well-being. However, development is a problem. The child does not develop at all. And um, because they don't have any critiques and they will continually make mistakes even later in life, which can lead to a very big problem, right? So then let's look at some other types of parenting. And let's start with Asians and the Singaporean type of parenting, authoritarianism. So what is authoritarianism defined as? Well, it's basically where a parent, unlike or the polar opposite of permissive, actually controls and puts constraints on their child. They set limits on them. They make sure that the child does specific tasks so that they can become the best that they can be. Societies for Research and Child Development says that authoritarian parents actually see the child as an extension of themselves with their success intertwined with the parent's personal identities and self-worth. Now, maybe this is a lot more common in Chinese culture because of how um, Chinese culture puts so much stress on this idea of family and how family, uh, how important family is in just your pride as, uh, as a person. And so um, because of this pride and this love for their own child, they want to constantly ensure that they follow specific instructions to become the best that they can be, which is great, completely the opposite of permissive parenting and actually fixes the problem of development in the child. This can also be seen in, even in Singapore where tuition is extremely common and parents are always looking for ways to help their child. However, this type of parenting can also be, again, compared to country. China controls their nation quite restrictively. And as a result, we can also see that child China has yielded quite great results, right? They have an, a, like a very progressive economy They're at the top of trading, right? So there are definitely very good results 
that um, come out of this. However, when we look at China's people, well, they don't really have the ability to express themselves as much. And that is the same for parenting. The children don't really have the ability to express themselves that much. So let's understand something real quick. In Amy Chua's book, Battle Hymn of the Tiger Mother, she never allowed her child to sleep over, to get a grade under an A, or not come first in class, clearly putting very clear constraints and expectations on their child to succeed no matter what. And even though these constraints can, would have, in the end and long run, yielded her children because going to incredible universities, it does not address or prioritize the child's own expression and as a result, does not prioritize well-being. This can be seen again in the Yale and U.S. study where maternal and paternal authoritarianism was related, related to lower self-esteem, a greater sense of inadequacy due to this humongous um, and overwhelming expectations on the child, and of course, um, mental health issues including depression and anxiety. And so because of these specific problems, we can see that again in our criteria, it is not going to be completely filled. While development is fixed from permissive parenting and the parent is still satisfied with their child because the child is able to perform for them, development, sorry, well-being is not reached and is not completely prioritized. And so even though this parent can be very effective, like Chua's children, it can be very risky in maintaining the relationship between the parent and child. So, Let's look at the third type of parenting, which is negligent parenting. And this parenting actually gives too much individuality, but not because it's because the parent is there to give the individuality like uh, permissive parenting, but because the parent is just not there at all. They're not even present in the child's life. It would have made no difference whether the parent was there or not. And so that is why they are considered negligent parenting, similar to negligent numbers, so close to zero that they're not there, right? And the problem with this type of parenting is that the child is forced to go down this path of trial and error all by themselves. They have to assess situations, make mistakes, and constantly reap the failure of this. And this thing about constantly failing over and over again, even though you will surely learn, is that you it'll leave permanent scars on you mentally and cause you to make horrible decisions. So let's look at an example of this uninvolved parenting. In Jeanette Walls' The Glass Castle, we can see that Walls as a two-year-old was cooking hot dogs. And while she was cooking hot dogs with an open flame, mind you, her mom was in another room just painting. This shows uninvolved parenting because her mom was not there while her, her kid is quite literally playing with fire. And so as a result of that, Walls set, gets set on fire, has to go to the hospital, and has permanent scars and burns on her for the rest of her life. Similar to how in uninvolved parenting, the child would be permanently and utterly impacted and have scars on them from the mistakes that they make for the rest of their life. And so as we can see, this criteria really fills nothing for the child. They don't develop and they don't really have a good well-being in the long run. And so for satisfaction, the parent may, in a twisted way, be satisfied with their current place, but that's not really something that we consider a benefit. So, so since we've seen that permissive parenting is too lenient and on criticism and guidance, and authoritarian parent is too um, overbearing on this criticism and guidance, and negligent parenting is not even something we'll consider, then we need to look at the fourth type of parenting once again, which is authoritative parenting. Now, authoritative, authoritative, authoritative parenting is actually the intersection between the two cultures, China and America. It doesn't, it doesn't ensure that their child is doing whatever they want and giving them free will and free reign over them, but it also um, doesn't overly control and leave no room for negotiations. In fact, negotiation is the name and the defining part of author uh, authoritative parents. Parents and children have to cooperate and communicate together to set specific limitations, to understand each other and what they want in order to produce the best possible result into the development of a child. Which means that in this talk, the parent is not the only problem. The child must also 
change and cooperate so that they can negotiate and cooperate with their parents to reach certain midpoints if there is a disagreement. The child can't override their parents and have free reign over them like permissive, but also won't be overrided by their parents like authoritarian parenting, right? And so as parents strive their, for their best at, for their child, the child can also strive for their best to become the best version of themselves for their parent to fulfill this role of satisfaction. So well-being is met because the parent understands what the child wants and the child knows what they want. So there's no, there's not too much pressure. Guidance is met because the, the parent actually knows what the child wants and can guide them to the correct locations and um, goals in their life. And of course, the child will have a um, good well-being because you know they aren't too, um, they aren't going to be overly um, pressurized like authoritarian parenting. And we can see that this actually does work. Authoritative parenting does yield, according to, again, Yale and US, higher self-esteem, greater self-reliance, and a lower sense of inadequacy, right? And it also leads to lower depression rates, less aggression, less anxiety, less withdrawn symptoms, and delinquent behaviors because the child is controlled, but it is not overly controlled. And so we have to understand that communication is key when considering authoritative parenting and understanding each other and having empathy for what we want is the best way to understand each other in raising a kid or being raised. Because remember, you only have one chance in your life to be raised or raise someone and you don't want to miss out or regret any of that in the future. So going back on Tolstoy's novel, Anna Karenina, happy families are all alike, but unhappy families are all unhappy in their own way. They must be saying, or maybe he meant, parents and children, families communicating with each other, with each other to all be open to understanding each other and their expectations makes them all alike. But when they don't open up or don't communicate with each other, they all become unhappy and they all become um, cold and not understanding towards each other due to a lack of communication and understanding of each other's obligations. And so it's from this that I hope that you enjoyed my TED Talks and hopefully you too can implement authoritative parenting into your life. Thank you.